Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we're back from LeBrand's new video. Today is a video, we are back to preview and predict our next game which happens to be another cheeky friendly but this one is there in France, na 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 na, it's back home at Ibrox and it's against Mullerwell. And speaking of Mullerwell, that's where I actually want to start today's video off because since I've done like my like pre-season fixtures breakdown where we discussed who we were playing and stuff like that, a lot of people commented on that video saying, why Mullerwell? What's the point in playing a team we'll play about 16 times during the actual season? Wouldn't it be better to warm up against this team or this team or this team for a different country because this game right here versus Mullerwell isn't exactly a glamour friendly. Because if you actually think about it, right, we're halfway through pre-season now. What is our first game of the season in league football? It's Aberdeen away. What's the point of just filling our pre-season with teams that get the ball down, who will go after us, who will attack us, who will try and pin us back, when that's not what we're going to be playing in a couple weeks time to start the season off versus Aberdeen, because they're not going to get the ball down and play football, ladies and gentlemen. They are a defensive physical Scottish side, and what best way to prepare for a defensive physical Scottish side than to play a defensive physical Scottish side. I honestly think this is brilliant planning for Rangers Football Club because we've had that tournament in France now, right? We played Lyon and we played Nice. Getting done, playing expansive football, actual playing a game of football, that gets us ready for the European football versus Bayer Leverkusen and onwards through the qualifiers for next season as well. That takes care of that. Now, as we edge closer to the season starting, let's get a wee bit closer to him and get used to what we will be playing and coming up against. And I honestly think that is the way we need to go forward. The league has to be the priority, so let's prepare properly for it. So that's where I sit regarding these friendlies. I'd much rather play Mullerwell, who will offer a physical test, rather than going ahead and playing one of these small, dirty teams that we could slap 7-1. Oh wait. Now all joking in that aside, I'm actually really excited about this game for a number of reasons. Not only is it just a game and we get to watch Rangers play, but also where we find ourselves regarding the pre-season, edging closer now to that first game of the season. This is where it gets the sort of business time of the pre-season. The first couple, right, everyone's getting a game, this guy, this guy, everyone's getting involved as we're slowly but surely building the fitness up. But now as we edge closer to the season starting, we'll start to see our starting eleven take shape and we'll start to see the players that's actually getting used in the next few games. They will be the ones that will be near the team throughout the season. And that right there is one of the most exciting parts of pre-season for me is seeing the players now grasping their opportunities and forcing their way in and amongst the squad. And that leads me to what I want to talk about next in today's video. It's a couple of players that's left us with a very, very interesting discussion to have ahead of the season. And the first player that we need to speak about has to be Nathan Parson. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to sit here and repeat everything I said on the Leon preview where we spoke about Parson in that video. I'm not going to bore you and repeat myself. No, 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 no. We know this guy's quality and we know this lad's promise. But what we are going to do is just sit back and discuss me and thee, his last two games over in France. Because we spoke before the very first pre-season games that there will be players given an opportunity and they might only get one so they need to grasp it with both hands and show that they are ready and they want to be here at this football club and I think after what we have just seen from Parson over in France despite not playing a 45 minute substitute or given a hell of a lot of minutes the kids still went ahead and grasped that opportunity and left a lasting impression, especially given how many minutes and when he actually played. You think about it, right, 15, 20 minutes or something like that, that's what he played overall, and you think to yourself, is that enough of your time? Well, actually look at who was on when he was on. When he was on that part, that is when both teams had their best players on the part. You're talking about Depay, you're talking about Dembele for Leon, and you're talking about Nice's best and attacking players as well. And during those last 10, 15 minutes when both teams had their best players on, pushing for equalisers or just pushing for a goal and gone after us, did he ever look for once out of place? Not. And that says a lot to me. This wasn't one of these cases where a young guy was put in there and yes, he was a wee bit of hindrance to the team, but it was good experience for the laddie and he'll grow for it. No, 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 no. It was the exact opposite. He well and truly rose to the occasion and he seemed to relish to play against the caliber of players that he was up against because his positioning was perfect and his tackling was absolutely immaculate. Honestly, when I think of our time in France, one of the memories that comes straight to my mind is in that second game versus Nice where it was still tight at this point. We were only 1-0 ahead. They have a counter-attack. They're going after Conor Goldson. Conor Goldson does very well to stand the defender up, eh, the attacker up, sorry. He cuts inside Goldson. But who is there to help his centre-back out? 
Nathan Patterson and did he recklessly dive into the challenge that was inside the box but have gave away a penalty or anything like that? No. He stood on his feet, he waited for the perfect opportunity, he just took the ball so effortlessly away for the Nice attacker, walked sorry sideline towards the corner flag and did he rush and kick the ball, did he panic and punt the ball away? No. He calmly waited for Nice to put the pressure on him which freed up another Rangers player. Then he found the pass. That right there tells me that he's not only just physically talented, but he's talented up here and he gets what Gerard's philosophy is at Rangers Football Club and what he wants from his fullbacks. So, so impressed with the laddie and I'm very interested to see what his role is and how much minutes he is actually going to get versus Murrow because this one is very, very different, right? The two games that he played previously, he was challenged more defensively, right? Had to be in the right position, had to be close to his centre-back, had to use his pace, had to use up there, but now versus Mullow, they're going to be a lot more defensive than the last two teams were, so now he's going to be tested on the other side of the park, because we know what's required from our fullbacks, both Barisic and Tavernier have to offer the width, they need to get wide and they need to pretty much be an attacker for the majority of the game as well, so it's going to be interesting now that we've saw that he can do the defending side of things, can he go and do the modern fullback thing, get forward and be that guy on the right. So in saying that, it's another opportunity and another chance for Patterson to grasp it and show us all that he can be the backup fullback to Tavernier all season long. Now next up, we're going to be switching up because rather than talking about the players that actually played in France, we're going to stick with the defence and talk about someone who wasn't seen at all. And I'm of course talking about Philippe Palander. Now if you're a channel legend and you watch this channel a lot, you would have heard me say on numerous occasions that I think Palander is going to be absolutely vital for us in the upcoming season with a full pre-season under his belt and arriving fully fit and ready to go. Something that he obviously wasn't when he joined last season. Well, where we actually are now halfway through pre-season fixtures before the opening day of the season, we haven't seen Hollander play once. And because we haven't seen him, I know there's rumours now starting to eke out and people are starting to say, oh, Hollander might be on his way out. Gerard doesn't fancy him. He's too slow. He's that. He's been shown up. That is all, in my personal opinion, made up nonsense. All we actually do know about Hollander's pre-season so far is that he missed the behind the doors friendly versus Hamilton just before the French trip as a precaution because of how serious his injury was. And ahead of the first game versus Leon, we were told that everyone was good to go and ready to be called upon if they were needed. But again, we didn't see Hollander, which again interested me very much. But Coming into this game, it all makes complete and utter sense that this is now the game that Hollander comes in. You could say that Gerard was just managing him very, very carefully, not really taking him over to France, just giving him even longer just to be fully fit and ready to dive right into pretty much Scottish football as that's who we're up against versus Mullerwell. Or at least that is what I'm hoping and praying for, ladies and gentlemen. I'm hoping we see Hollander tomorrow at some point versus Mullerwell, whether it is starting or coming on to build up his fitness end and then getting the start versus Coventry. If we don't see him tomorrow, that is when I'll start to worry on his condition and maybe he's not quite ready yet. But again, as far as we know and the actual truth and the stuff that's been said by Rangers is Hollander is apparently good to go. But with the best Swedish player to ever play in Scottish football now discussed and that rumour sort of slapped to one side that he's on the way out. Now we turn to the last player that I think we all need to keep an eye on for tomorrow's game versus Mullerwell as I think it's going to be vital for him and for us. And the player that I'm discussing is going to be Ross McCrory and it's weird that we find ourselves in this position. Sort of 12 months on from Gerard saying that this cut has everything in him to be a future captain at this football club but where we find ourselves 12 months after that he seemingly on the outskirts. And as you'll know, I was very worried about not even seeing Ross McCrory at all during the preseason. That was making me very, very nervous. But thankfully, we did in the game versus Leon. And I think his performance has actually gone underneath the radar slightly because of the hype, and rightly so, of Patterson, Mayo, and Calvin Bassey, who saw that game out. But Ross McCrory was there as well, ladies and gentlemen. He showed what he was all about, getting stuck in to your Depay's, your Dembele's. He showed that his strength is still no went anywhere. He's still got the pace, which I think a lot of our centre-backs lack. And he's just got that uncompromising nature about him that I thought worked very well at centre-half. And I wanted to mention him because I think that performance right there may have just may breathed fresh life into his first-team chances at this football club as a defender for Rangers, because we know the centre-back situation that we find ourselves in, Katic is out till at least January, and Hollander, as we just mentioned, is being managed 
very carefully. So I, I think he's definitely one of these players that we need to circle ahead in this preseason game versus Mullerwell. Keep an eye on and check what his usage is in this game because I think it's going to be very, very telling to see how he plays and where. That's all right, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be a couple of things and a couple of players that I will be looking out for amongst, obviously, everyone else. But what about you guys? What do you want to see from this friendly? Do you want someone to play? Who are you going to be keeping an eye on? Who do you think needs to grab this opportunity and the commentary opportunity to be here. Now, as this is a friendly game, there's not too much information actually to break down and tell you about both teams or even the oppositional preview like we normally do on this channel. All we do know about Mullerwell is injured skipper Declan Gallagher will be missing the game and also their most recent game they lost 3-2 in a game versus Kilmarnock. And I know what you're thinking. Five goals scored in a game between Kilmarnock and Mullerwell. You can. It's no league football, ladies and gentlemen. So with all that being said, that's us reached the end of today's video. Now all that's left is for me and me to do our stab in the dark and try to predict the unpredictable nature of our friendly. So get your thoughts out there on the game. And whilst you're hopefully doing that, I will give you mine very, very briefly. I'm expecting a lot of our starters and a lot of our key players to play more minutes in this game as we gear up, as we've already mentioned. So I'm expecting a very, very strong performance from Rangers. So I'm going to go out with a Rangers free Mullerwell nil. Which obviously would keep the clean sheet streak going, which... It's very, very hard to do for an entire pre-season, especially all the swaps and changes. But I'm going to back it, ladies and gentlemen. My goal scorers are going to be Alfredo Morelos, Mr. Hadji and Ryan Kent. And now that me and the have had their say, let's sit back, relax and hear from the people then, shall we? There's been 1,186 votes and there's still 41 minutes remaining. That's unbelievable, Nation. Thank you so much for the support and ask them the exact same question as I asked you and their prediction is far and away and 92% of the vote is a Rangers home win. So let's see what they've had to say then. Andrew Wilson is the first one in and he writes in 3-1, well win. I see what he's done there. Morelos, Hadji and Stuart A to score. We love to see Stuart A getting a wee bit of love. Adamskate Game in writes in 4-1 to Rangers. Morelos with two goals and Kent with the other and Hadji with the last goal of the game. Steve writes in Rangers 4-0 dominant performance. Morelos brace Ryan Jack goal and a goal from Big Connor Galton. Love you big man. Jai Roberts writes in 3-1 to Rangers. Morelos brace and Barker to get a goal. We like that. Ginge Graham writes in 2-1 to Rangers. Uh, Danny Taylor just writes in sadly I will miss the game once again. F's in the chat. F's in the chat. Charlie writes in I reckon it's going to be 2-0 CG. Hopefully another Clean sheet. Matty writes in 4 0 to Rangers, which by far looks like the most popular scoreline. He's going to go with Morelos and Hadji to score the goals. And the last one we'll read out in tonight's video. Scroll all the way up here, scroll all the way down here, and we'll stop it right here. And it comes from Jude. And they write in 3 0. Well win to Rangers. Again, that's an old school CG Novo 92 line, which we greatly, greatly appreciate here. But that's it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We are back amongst the action, which is always. Great to see. If you guys haven't already, you know what to do by now. But I've been CJ Nova92. Thank you so much for watching and bye.